Hey there, so today I wanna to share with you guys my simple and easy go-to shower gel formula. If you're new to formulating, I can't recommend this enough. You should go watch my Formulating for Beginner series so you can understand the basics of formulating. This formula is pretty beginner friendly, but you might be confused by seeing a bunch of percents up on the screen. This is called a formula, and in formulating skincare products, we use the formula to create our recipe. So we transfer those percents into grams so we can actually weigh out the recipe to create however much we want to make. I also have a video explaining how to transfer percents into a recipe, so go watch that video. I'll link it down below. So we're gonna be starting with phase A, and I'm making a 500 gram batch. The first ingredient we're using is xanthan gum soft. This is far superior than any other xanthan gum. You can use other xanthan gums, but the sensory feel isn't as nice, you won't get a clear formulation, and it might be more gummy and tacky. So that's why I recommend the soft version. And I added in 7.5 grams. This is what's actually going to be thickening your shower gel. Then I am going to add in some glycerin. This is a must have if you're a formulator. It's a humectant that helps hydrate the skin. And I added in 50 grams of it. So we're going to mix the two together. This is called creating a slurry. Xanthan gum hydrates best when you mix it in with glycerin first. So that's why we're doing it. Now I'm going to be adding in some Uxel K903. This is an eco cert preservative and I'm adding in six grams of it. It kind of has issues solubilizing in water, so mixing it in with glycerin produces the best results. Now it's time to pick out a mica powder. I purchased mine from Mad Mica because they are ethically sourced micas, and you can use whatever color you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and add in some blue mica powder, and I didn't weigh it because it's such a small amount my scale doesn't pick it up, so just add in like a pinch and mix it in. Next, we're gonna be adding in some distilled water, this is part of phase B, and this is our base to our shower gel. I added in 281.5 grams of it, but you can use like a hydrosol or something instead if you would like. And I'm just mixing it all in, and you'll notice it starts to thicken and gel up. You may also notice that there are clumps. This is due to the xanthan gum, but this is totally normal, and those will go away after about 24 hours. Now, I'm gonna start working on phase C, this is the surfactant phase, and I'm starting with 50 grams of coca metopropyl betaine. This is an amphoteric surfactant. It's your co-surfactant, so it's kind of like your secondary surfactant. And surfactants, in this formula, it is the ingredients that are going to be creating all the lather and foam. And I'm actually going to mix that with the glycerol oleate. You don't necessarily need to do this, it's just the glycerol oleate is really thick, as you can tell. So I want to add the coca metopropyl betaine into it so I can get it out of the bowl easier. But you don't need to mix the two together. You can just add them both directly into your beaker. But the glycerol oleate is actually a refatting agent. It's not necessary for this formula, but it makes products that contain surfactants less drying and makes them more soft, conditioning, and luxurious and gentle on the skin. So that is the reason I'm adding it into this product. But if you don't have it, you don't need it you can just replace it with water instead. And I just added that directly into the beaker. Like I said, you don't need to mix the two together. If you don't want to, you can just add both of them individually straight into the beaker. And now the last ingredient is actually our main anionic surfactant. This is the main ingredient that's going to be producing all the lather and foam. I'm adding 100 grams of the AOS 40. I do have the inky name up on the screen, so you can search it from your supplier. And also, by the way, in the past, I always said INCI name, but apparently it's inky, so I don't know. I guess I'm going to adopt that name now. After everything is mixed together, it's time to check and adjust the pH. Um, the natural pH of this product is 5.55, which is fine. You typically want products to have a pH anywhere between 4.5 to 5.5, and you lower the pH by mixing 50% citric acid with 50% distilled water to create what I'm holding up on the screen right now, and this will help lower the pH. So I don't want to go into all the details on how to do this because I have a video that explains it extremely well, and it would take up a lot of time for me to explain it here, so go watch that video. I'll link it down below for you guys. And I got the pH to 5.47, which I'm happy with. So I'm going to be covering the speaker, and I'm going to let it sit overnight to let all those chunks settle out. And here we are the next day. It's a little bit thicker than it was yesterday. It's nice and smooth and thick and jelly, and I'm obsessed with the texture. And the color looks beautiful. And yeah, now all we gotta do is just 
bottle it up. It is always a good idea to check the pH of your products again the next day, just to make sure they didn't drift or anything, because sometimes that can happen, so keep that in mind. But yeah, this is a really easy and basic shower gel that feels luxurious, just like any kind of store-bought shower gel, with all ingredients that you're familiar with, and you made it yourself, so how freaking awesome is that? Um, yeah. Go check out my Patreon where I have a blog version of this video. You're also able to download the recipe and print it out if you would like over there. And I post two exclusive videos on my Patreon every single month so you can get more Tara Lee content if you want. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time. Later.